Welcome to this edition of Action Video Game Talk. I'm your host, Scott Action Jackson, and once again, we have a lot of news to cover, so why don't we just get right into them. Nintendo will release a Mickey Mouse Edition 3DS XL, sold exclusively through Walmart. The new Disney-themed 3DS XL will go on sale April 11th, along with Disney Magical World a game that features more than 60 Disney characters and let players dress their avatars in Disney outfits. Namco Bandai published the 3DS title in Japan, but Nintendo is handling publishing duties in North America. The Mickey 3DS XL is the second special edition handheld to promote Disney Magical World in North America. Last week, Disney and Nintendo announced a Disney-themed Peach Pink 2DS system which comes with a Disney Magic World carry case for the handheld. Now, when they first announced a pearl pink 2DS for the release of the Disney Magical World, I, I had I thought that it is possible that they could release one with like Mickey Mouse on it, but instead, as we can see here, they had it planned but for the 3DS XL, and the whole sold exclusively at Walmart. I got a feeling you might be able to find this on like Amazon, if not eBay, if not. Before the release, probably after. But yeah, there probably will be like a limited supply. Nintendo has announced a pink and white 2DS handheld will be available in Europe from May 16th to celebrate the launch of Kirby Triple Deluxe on the same day. The console, which you can see on the image, seems to sport a color scheme similar to the peach pink model announced for North America last week, only with an inverted coloring. It looks like the pink 2DS might live on longer, but not exactly like the actual Disney-themed one. But with this, it's only going to be in Europe so far, and for the Kirby Triple Deluxe release. So, technically, it could make its way over to the U.S., but if it does, it does give the U.S. like a third option as far as the 2DS colors. Nintendo has announced a Nintendo Direct focused exclusively on Super Smash Bros. Despite the regular flow of information, there's still a lot we don't know about the title. The most important detail we've been waiting for is the release date. The director previously expressed frustration about Super Smash Bros. Brawl single-player cutscenes appearing online. We've been left to wonder what this means for the single-player content in the new entry. Now, I know I have been waiting for a while for them to actually release an actual date for the Super Smash Bros. game for the Wii U and the 3DS. And I'm sure a lot of gamers out there that have been following all these videos and announcements as far as the characters and stages and stuff like that for both systems, they have been wanting an actual date so that they know when to expect this. And hopefully those questions will be answered on Tuesday, April 8th, uh, shows 3 p.m. Pacific and 6 p.m. Eastern, They'll probably be streaming it on, I think, Nintendo's YouTube channel and possibly the Nintendo actual webpage itself. So you might want to check out those parts. You might want to check out the Nintendo webpage and the Nintendo YouTube channel to see if they have like a upcoming date for it listed in time so that you know the exact time zone that'd be for wherever you're watching it. And of course, there is a lot of stuff that we don't know about the game also. So hopefully they'll reveal a lot more stuff that will be wanting, needing. This week kicks off the first week for April's Instant Game Collection. It also marks the launch of Mercenary Kings on PlayStation 4. But you won't have to open your wallet for it if you are a PlayStation Plus member. Don't fret if you don't own a PlayStation 4 yet though. The Cape Crusader will swoop in and save your week. Batman Arkham City joins the fray for PlayStation Plus members on PlayStation 3. Now, I have downloaded both these titles, the Mercenary Kings on the PlayStation 4, and the Batman Arkham City for the PlayStation 3. I've not tried the Mercenary Kings game. They might be making you think that it'll be like an old-school shooter type, like the Contra shooters were. People know about the Batman Arkham games, so they already know that the Arkham City game is going to be awesome. And I think these are like the two big uh, games for the PlayStation Plus in April, so... After this week, should just be like either maybe one or two important games coming out for the PlayStation Plus membership. 
Developer Switchblade Monkeys has confirmed that its Wild West shooter, Secret Ponchos, won't be hitting its planned April release date. The game was originally slated to be part of the month's PlayStation Plus promotion, but Mercenary Kings has taken its spot. That little switch inspired some players to reach out to Switchblade Monkeys, and the studio confirmed via Twitter that its release changed. The reason they provided was that they were spending additional time beta testing the game to ensure that it is up to snuff. Now, I've seen some stuff about this Secret Ponchos game, and it's going to be an interesting, fun little game. And with the fact that they kind of pushed it back some, I'm guessing they want to make sure everything is okay when they release it, and try to get out any and all bugs if there is any. But then again, the one thing that does come up every time when there's a delay, it's like, you know, would you rather have... A game with a lot of glitches and problems with it, or do you want a game that's more focused and polished? A new update hit the console version of Minecraft this week, but that isn't the only new addition if you play the PlayStation 3. Mojang announced on the PlayStation blog that the Minecraft PS3 edition is receiving new skin and texture packs. Skin Pack 1 includes a lineup of some of Sony's biggest stars, including Nathan Drake, Heavy Rain characters, Killzone characters, and Sly Cooper. The other unannounced Skin Pack is titled Battle and Beast, which includes koalas, a Cleopatra lookalike, an octopus, and a few cavemen. In addition to the Skin Packs, PlayStation 3 users can also download two texture packs, the City Texture Pack makes Minecraft looks more modern and clean, while the Plastic Texture Pack will make everything appear more plastic. Now, I'm a Minecraft player on PC and PS3, and hearing that there's, gonna, there's actual skin texture packs to be some of the Sony characters is a nice bonus. Now, hopefully they'll be updating the PS3 and maybe the Xbox 360 version to include some of the additional stuff that they included in the PC version. But yeah, this is a nice little bonus for people who have the PlayStation 3 version to have to be able to play like Nathan Drake from the Uncharted series, Heavy Rain characters, Killzone characters, and even Sly Cooper. As we bid a tearful Games with Gold goodbye to Dungeon Defenders on the last day of March, Microsoft has announced the two titles that will be stepping up in April. The good news is that both are more recent releases than we've seen in the past months. Starting this week, you'll be able to download Square Enix's Hitman Absolution. The most recent installment in the long-running series gives players more flexibility than it has in past entries. It also includes a mission creator, so you can design your own assassination scenarios. On the second half of the month, Tequila Works' side-scrolling zombie game, Dead Light, will rotate in. Now, to me... Microsoft's little Games with Gold membership stuff is nothing but a weak version of the PlayStation Plus membership. But the games that they have available this month for Games with Gold, to me it's like, they got one good one and that's the Hitman Absolution game. What is this, uh, Dead Light is a side-scrolling zombie game? How many side-scrolling zombie games are there? What, maybe a handful? Microsoft was quick to scorch rumors of a Ridley Scott-produced Halo film earlier this year. But, a recent announcement reveals there is something in the works. A brief email from a Microsoft representative announced the project without revealing many details. 343 Industries, Xbox Entertainment Studios, and Scott Free Productions are proud to announce a new Halo digital feature project to be released later this year. The project will be executive produced by Ridley Scott and Scott Free TV President David Zucker. Sergio Mimica Gazzara will direct. When reached out for more details on the project, Microsoft replied, We are not confirming additional information on the project at this time, but we'll have more to share at E3. Like many Halo fans, I myself have been waiting to hear any kind of news of a actual Halo movie. And with them doing that little Forward Onto Dawn miniseries, it kind of seemed like they could have gone into a movie next, but instead uh, Microsoft is going to do some kind of new series that's going to debut through the Xbox One, and now apparently there's this new digital feature that's being directed by Ridley Scott. Is it going to be directed or produced? 
but apparently Ridley Scott's going to be involved, in which case people are still going to be scratching their heads. I could see maybe like a mini series being done to try and do each video game. You know, Halo 1 into like a mini series, Halo 2 into a mini series, and Halo 3 into a mini series, but I, I, don't, I don't see how they could actually do a full game of Halo into one movie without cutting so much stuff. When Lego The Hobbit was announced as encompassing the first two films only, many wondered how Warner Brothers and Telltale Games would close out the trilogy. Of the two realistic options, a second complete version, or DLC, which makes more sense, reports are coming out of London Toy Fair by way of Brick Fanatics that Warner Brothers will be adding the third film as downloadable content. Now, when the LEGO Hobbit game was first announced to come out, they were going on about how it covers the first and the second movie, but they never said anything about the third one. And of course, that brought up the question, how would they cover the third one if they don't do like a complete edition? Doing DLC for it would be the only real good option. So I would be glad to hear that they are going to do DLC for it. If they tried the complete edition, they would have to go back and do that for some of the other LEGO games. Rockstar continues to expand and improve Grand Theft Auto Online. Now the long-awaited co-op heist missions are on the schedule of updates. On a post on the Rockstar Newswire, the company detailed some of the new updates we can expect to see in Grand Theft Auto Online throughout the spring. Co-op heists will be added, allowing you to partner with members of your crew or random players to tackle heists to get together. Other updates include the Capture Creator, which allows players to create custom capture jobs with tons of options for pickups, weaponry, locations, and other variables. Rockstar will be looking at the best of them for its Rockstar Verified Jobs status program. The High Life update will focus on luxury and of Los Santos economy. You will also now have the ability to own two different properties and garages at the same time. Along with these content updates, there will be a ton of fixes and enhancements, both large and small. These include a new non-contact race option, which allows you to disable collisions between cars, increase payouts for completing parachute, race, deathmatch, and jobs, and fixes intended to further contain any cheat or exploits currently being used in the game. Now, this is something that the players of Grand Theft Auto V and Grand Theft Auto Online have been waiting for for a long while. And that is for these co-op heists to actually come out with one of the updates. Now, unfortunately, they don't actually say when during spring it will be coming out. Hopefully, they'll actually give us an actual date. Until then, it, at least it's something to look forward to that we can actually see that it's coming. Ubisoft Montreal won't be building a demo for its upcoming open world Hack 'em Up Watch Dogs, as it needs to focus on its resources on getting the final game out on time. Responding to rampant fan questions on Twitter, Watch Dogs creative director Jonathan Morin stated that there will be no demo planned before release. Sorry for the wait, doing my best. Morin went on to explain to another tweeter that doing demos take time. The focus is on the game. You will see more footage before release. Be patient and thanks for your passion. Smiley face. Now, with most games, you would kind of expect a demo to more or less test out the game. And uh, you can actually understand what they mean by not wanting to, to focus on the main game. Some people have been able to test out the game already at like some uh, video game conferences and E3s. Yeah, it is a little upsetting that they aren't going to make a demo. I mean, they could probably try and make maybe like one or two levels to play maybe after the launch. But yeah, people can understand why they don't want to do a demo right now. That they just want to put all their effort into making and completing this game that they can. An upcoming documentary on the European chiptune scene shows us the life, death, and rebirth of an original Game Boy. It's a great sequence which depicts an original Game Boy going from factory to home to a second life as a piece of musical equipment. Europe in 8 Bits is a documentary that will depict the roots and rapid growth of the chiptune musical movement in Europe, in which musicians repurpose old consoles and handheld game systems as electronic 
instruments, often using them to create music inspired by 8 and 16 game soundtracks. Now, I just finished watching the little trailer that they made for the Europe in 8-Bits documentary, and it was fun showing an animated style on how they made the old handheld game systems, and then how it can get a second life and become a piece of musical equipment. Now, it is always nice when people and companies can actually take these old systems and give them second life, because there are some old systems out there that just get tossed in the garbage and get destroyed, never to be used again. But yeah, I got a feeling this is going to be an interesting documentary that gamers out there should watch, especially gamers who have played these old systems. Okay, as far as this past week's major new releases, we have Mystery Case Files Ravenhurst for the Nintendo 3DS, Goat Simulator, yeah, for PC, which is a download only, Batman Arkham Origins Blackgate Deluxe Edition for PC and PS3 as downloads, The Elder Scrolls Online for PC, MLB 14 The Show for PlayStation 3 and PlayStation Vita, Ragnarok Odyssey Ace for PlayStation 3 and Vita, the Sony Sports Pack Volume 1 featuring MLB 14 The Show and NBA 2K14 for PlayStation 3, and then the Call of Duty Ghost Devastation DLC map pack for Xbox 360 and Xbox One. So that does it for this edition of Action Video Game Talk. I will once again be posting links, a uh, link below for the Facebook page. If you want to, leave some comments in the comment section down there. Uh, hit subscribe. Give us a few likes on Facebook if you can get over there. We will be hopefully posting another video next week, along with a few clips probably after this one gets posted from the news articles that were just done. Uh, until next time, which will probably be next weekend. Hopefully before the next weekend. Bye. It, uh, it's fine. Uh, I'm good. Uh, I've got a thick skull. I don't have a skull. Or bones.